Hey guys, welcome to another channel episode. This week I'm bringing to you a data tool episode. We're going to be talking all about the brand new Apple MacBooks, specifically the M1 Max. I'm going to be talking all about whether a data scientist should have one in their toolkit and all the pros and cons that come with having a ARM MacBook this day and age. So let's get right on to it. Alright guys, so I've already used the M1 MacBook Pro for around three weeks now and I've been using it for data science only half of the time that I'm really using it. Most of the time I'm using this laptop for everyday things, say applying to jobs, looking at the news, uh, maybe sometimes even some YouTube and some workouts. and. The other half of the time, I've actually been using it for data science, but there's huge caveats with having a machine like this. And let me start off with the negatives and then go on to the positives. So with these M1 Macs, you are getting a couple of issues running a lot of virtualization software. So for a data scientist, what does this mean? So a lot of data scientists like myself need to use things like Spark or TensorFlow or um, Kubernetes and, 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 and all these other kind of frameworks that are really hard to install on your device. So if I were to do something like use the Docker container and use that on my machine, it would make life much, much easier. Specifically, I use Docker all the time for Spark on my main machine and it's just absolutely wonderful. I also happen to use it for TensorFlow but you're not going to want to do that with these Macs. But that's besides the point, Docker is a virtualization software and it's just not running well enough on Macs yet. In fact, Docker says that they should have it running very soon, the early 2021, which is, 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 is noteworthy because it's, it's a really fast um, turnover time for new software, but it's not out yet and therefore it kind of hinders my ability to do data science. I will very rarely, if I'm doing small data science things, use this Mac because I can't use Spark. Another thing that I already mentioned is TensorFlow. So, Funny enough, the day these machines came out, they had a TensorFlow for ARM out. Some Apple employee went out and worked on that and published it on GitHub with some very rudimentary instructions on how to get it working. But after doing some Reddit post and some research, I noticed that it is possible. You just have to make sure that your Anaconda setup right is the arm version of anaconda and that also comes with a couple of caveats so things like a numpy are okay but things like um scipy do not work fully on this machine on arm yet they haven't been compiled for arm yet and so i don't know about you but as a data scientist scipy is kind of necessary not necessary for every single project but most of the small things I'm doing, especially when doing EDA, I'm using SciPy, and I just wish that it would be over, um, ported over already. But as I mentioned, the 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 stats for running TensorFlow on these new MacBook Pros is out, and even the MacBook Air is just running the M1 chip. It is as powerful as a 2070. Uh, from NVIDIA, I don't know what the equivalent of AMD is, but the truth is that these machines don't have a GPU, right? But act like they do. And that's really, really impressive. So you're getting GPU level, you know, not the latest GPU levels, but, you know, fairly recent GPU um, levels without any GPU, which is very, very impressive for TensorFlow. Now, again, you can run TensorFlow on arm and it will work 
but it will not work with your normal anaconda setup it will only work with the arm version and i'll put a link of the arm version down below and that arm version comes with its own caveats such as pandas might work numpy will work what scipy won't work and so and there and there's other little ones that won't work that's really really annoying and just a, one of the main reasons why i'm not using this machine nearly as much as my linux machine in order to do data science so that's kind of the biggest caveats for me i'm a big docker user i'm a big tensorflow user but the truth is i also use a lot of aws services and so i don't really need my machine to have any power i could i could run and i do all the time run you know google colab on my ipad or run an aws instance from my laptop so now let's talk a little bit about the pros of having this m1 macbook pro so for things like basic eda rudimentary eda on data sets that are under a million by a million this computer can easily run that and you can do it using the normal Anaconda for Intel Max and run it over using Rosetta, which it does automatically, so no extra steps. And you can have things like NumPy, SciPy, um, sklearn, and, and every almost everything you can have that works on Anaconda will work on this machine. You just won't be running it in its native form, in its, in its ARM version. Now, there's a little bit of a loss gain there, but these machines are so incredibly fast. It's just incredible how fast they are and how the performance to power ratio that these machines have. These machines, fans never run. And I have other data science friends that use MacBook Pros. They use the 16, they use the 15, they use the 13, and they are always complaining about the fans. and. During Zoom calls, I'm always hearing the fans run when they're doing anything with Pandas or doing anything with with SKLearn. Like these will not run. The fan will not run during those things because the power to performance ratio is just insane. And so these are really the next gen uh, chips. So you're, you're going to be getting that power even if you're running a non-native app. Now, that's pretty cool. But like I said, I very quickly go from EDA to TensorFlow or Spark, so not not the greatest for me. Now, another thing that's just absolutely amazing about these machines is that you can do things like Google Colab, you can do things like AWS instances. Because the machine is so, so powerful, it's almost overkill for those things, but because the browsing speed is so fast, right, and, and just everything about the machine, the way it handles is the operating system is snappy this is a very great computer to be using to ssh into some other power or, or using a browser-based um Jupyter notebook like um google colab so that's just that's very awesome on these these m1 max i gotta say if you use google colab or you ews most of the time these are the machines for you especially since you don't need a GPU in that case, so you can go for the smaller version of these Macs, and they're one, they're the cheapest power to performance ratio of any of the more modern Macs. So amazing. So yeah, guys, that was my little tech review on the new M1 MacBook Pro. Let me just tell you that I have the 16 gigabytes RAM version, and in this version. They say, in, in, in these ARM chips, they say that 16 is actually like 32. I've seen some testing on that, some real life performance, and it looks like it does, it really does act like double. So if you just cut the eight gigabytes, it'd be like 16. For data science, you know that we're working with those large data sets, and you know that it, it would be smart to have just the most amount of RAM that you can afford. So I'm telling you, go with the most amount of RAM that you can afford with these. Whether to get the Air or the Pro, again, it's the only difference is a fan. The, the, the difference in the TensorFlow that I've seen so far, TensorFlow and ARM on these Macs, is, is almost no difference at all. So 
you know, go for the cheaper one in that case if you don't have the money. And lastly, I just wanted to say that while these machines are just amazing, they're not there yet for data science, but I suspect that at the speed that people are being able to port over um, their old software into new ones, I just find amazing. Like Chrome, uh, Firefox, uh, Microsoft, uh, video software like DaVinci Resolve, all these applications switched over within a week or so of this releasing. It just so happens that Docker is the last one. I have the, the, the idea that once Docker gets released and you can run TensorFlow on Docker for Macs, these are going to be the machine to have for data science. So I say that if you are a heavy developer, don't go for this yet. Stay with your old one. But when you find the news that Docker is on these Macs, when you find the news that people finally have SciPy, those are things to look for. I'd say get one of these. It's just the power performance is just amazing. And remember, as a data scientist, you're usually on AWS or Azure. So that's gonna that's gonna be my kind of long review on these. So I hope you enjoyed this video and give it a thumbs up if you have. And I'll see you on the next tech review for data tools. Peace.